um, and of course, uh, I will do that in words that uh, I'm currently in Qtmama, but I want to show you a little bit what I will be working on. It's, uh, if it does matter what kind of, of uh, data uh, uh, I will use, but I will use uh, speeches, uh, political speeches from the 2008 presidential race, U.S. presidential race. Uh, so, so I will use that as my data set. And I will try to give you some principle. Uh, but uh, what is important to know is that, well, dictionaries uh, could be developed with many uh, objectives in mind. And the, the steps you will take will depend on what is your objective. So I will try to describe some of those. Um, so, so, so let me call Wordstat right away. And um, so the idea is to come up with a dictionary that may look somehow like that, for example, that, that will allow you to measure either emotion or to, to describe concept. But uh, what you have to understand is that um, dictionaries can serve different purpose. And the purpose you will use the dictionary for will actually, uh, um, uh, uh, will actually uh, have a great effect on how you will build a dictionary. So for example, if you are doing a survey, or if you are analyzing comments from customers. What you want to do typically is you want to uh, create a descriptive dictionary that will look at the different issues that are being raised, the different uh, either positive and negative things that are being raised. So you try to make a dictionary that will tend to cover uh, the topics that are being mentioned. So that's one purpose. Uh, but sometimes uh, you may want instead to, uh, to uh, test some hypothesis. For example, you may want to look at uh, if there are any uh, signs of um, sustainability being mentioned by uh, annual reports by companies. So now you're looking for something very specific. And it's different. The, developing a dictionary for that is slightly different than, than trying to be a descriptive and tells what's in there. Um, uh, you could also want to to uh, to measure some uh, hidden dimension that are, uh, for example, that are um, that uh, for which you could use, for example, existing data sets. And and one example of that is that you could try to describe uh, for the political parties um, um, things that predict uh, one. Uh, uh, say, for example, in the U.S., it will be Republicans versus Democrats, and try to to maybe apply that. But it, the same could be true also for trying to uh, measure sentiment, where where you are trying to see whether things could be categorized as as positive or or, or negative. And the steps you, for all those are different uh, um, uh, because uh, you won't have the same strategy uh, if you want to create a descriptive one or if you want to test some hypothesis. And what I will do today is maybe focus more on what if you want to describe what's in the text, okay? So uh, for those of you who attended uh, my, my prior um, uh, webinar, where I was um, coughing quite a lot, <laughs> uh, now it's a little bit better, but um, so, so we look at some of the way to explore the content without any dictionary. And uh, if, if you have to describe a, um, uh, the content of, of a data sets like uh, surveys or comments, then this is a pretty good start actually to build a dictionary and I will explain to you why. For, well, first uh, here, let's start with a, uh, a, a uh, let's not apply any dictionary here. If I wanted to see what's in the text, I could do a first step, uh, a exploratory steps uh, and try to extract the topic, and I will show you. For, so, so, so I will um, take maybe five minutes to show you some of the features that should be that should ideally be used before uh, doing this uh, this uh, this dictionary development. Because you needed to know what people are talking about if you wanted to to really create a dictionary. But I will show you that those methods has some limits, and and that's where the dictionary. Is, is, is needed. So um, one thing that we do is that we look at co-occurrence of words. And, but, but of course, simply, um, let, let me go back here, simply getting the most frequent words does give you some ideas, uh, extracting phrases a little bit better. So here, if you didn't know that it was about uh, politics, now you, you have a good idea that, that it is about politics and you see 
words like healthcare, reference to American people, middle class, Al Qaeda, war in Iraq. So you could have guessed that it was uh, um, political speeches, and you may have guessed also that it was uh, 2008 uh, presidential race. So, uh, but um, so phrases is good, but uh, a better way is to look at co-occurrence. And um, typically, we look at words that tend to appear together. We normalize that, and 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 the clustering, I I that I demonstrated the last time will give you some ideas. And and I think that this is a great place to start when you wanted to build a dictionary, that uh, as um, as a function to describe what's in the text, because it will extract uh, uh, by focusing on the most frequent words, it will extract topic. Uh, but it will not like extract topics, and uh, so, so so basically you will s start to get some words, then you will start to get uh, some some topics like that. And, but as you move it, you will ha start it to get broader topics. And the clustering has one interesting feature that I think is 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 worth mentioning and worth using is that it will not only show you the topics, but it will tend to show you how maybe to organize them. So you could have topics, but you could it will suggest to you maybe broader topic. Why? Because uh, uh, if I move it further, it will tend to group items that are close to each other, and you will be able to see that it tends to, t to tell you how they should be organized. And this is one uh, nice feature of clustering. So for example, you, we have things about cutting taxes, and we have things about uh, creating jobs. So, so later they will be connected, creating a more economy kind of, of, of topics, but then we, we will have things about healthcare, uh, and we will have things about, so all of those things about the free market, uh, uh, housing crisis, all those are domestic issues, uh, education like that, while later we will have something about uh, more foreign issues. So I, I can already simply by looking at how topics are organized in my clustering, I can always identify um, um, a structure in my code book and I could create a broad category that will be domestic issues and other than that I could have economy, education, healthcare, uh, environment, then I could have a foreign issue and then I could add some, some things about uh, national security, etc. So if it gives me some ideas uh, on, on how to organize that and uh, here at the end I will have things about the, uh, the administrative process or, or the voting process and, 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 and a few other things like that. So, so it's a great way to start. Um, now, um, another great way to start is to use topic modeling, and I will show you that I can even create a very quick dictionary, so simply by asking the software to look at topics. And here, uh, I'm analyzing only 300 words, um, and, uh, but the thing is that uh, by focusing on the most frequent words, you will actually quite likely get what are the, the main topics, even if you don't look at all the words. I, I tend to use maybe uh, 500 or 1,000 words on large corpus, even smaller number of words on, on smaller corpus, but that's usually good enough because it will show you quite a lot topics, okay? So, so topic modeling is great because it will help you identify those. In this case, they are not listed uh, in a specific order like it was in the clustering, so so you may have to organize that, and that's where the clustering has some value, is that it may show you, it suggests to you a way to organize those. But I can save that as a dictionary, and if you want to have a very quick way to create a dictionary, you simply click on this, uh, no, not this one, this one, and it will actually store those topics. Of course, I've, I could clean them up before. Uh, I, I won't do it here for, for obvious reason, uh, efficiency and, and, and time restraint, but let me create an election uh, 2008 topics uh, based on that, okay? And I will use a waiting and you will understand. So now if I go back to my dictionary page, I actually have my dictionary. I could rename those and I have some words, okay? There's Okay, so, and that's a very, that's the most efficient way of creating a dictionary, but that's not necessarily the most, uh, most uh, reliable way uh, for several reasons. One of them is that it is based on single word taken alone, uh, but, but what we have here is all the words that uh, I kept in my healthcare 
topics, but I know that there are more words there. Uh, and also some words, for example, quality may not necessarily be associated with healthcare and could be associated with, with, with education. And in fact, sometime we will see the same word being in two different um, collections. So th this is a, uh, I often call topic modeling a quick and dirty way of, uh, of measuring topics. But what if you wanted to, uh, to uh, create a more more uh, reliable or more uh, useful topic, and let me try to bring something uh, in the meantime. So, so typically, I started with that, but I tend to then go and try to to uh, create a dictionary that will allow me to. Um, okay, good. Uh, that will. I'll, allow me to measure those topics but in a more specific way. And the way usually I, I tend to do that is I, I tend to create a topic from scratch. But I take note, so I have something about healthcare, uh, Middle East, something about energy, education. So let's create a, a, a dictionary and I will create election um, test. Okay? And but but I won't keep those keywords. I will simply start from scratch. If I want to create sub uh, main categories and subcategories, I could do it from here. And I will create some categories there. Let's create uh, domestic and foreign issue. So so that would be my two broad categories for now. And for domestic, I could put economy. I could put things about uh, education and healthcare. And let's have those. And whoa, I, I, I had them as a main category, but I should have done that as, as subcategory. So let me do it for, for foreign. I, I can move them later. But uh, OK, so let's, let's create subcategories for foreign. Uh, so I select foreign on, on the right. And now I will type um, um, war in Iraq. Iraq. Uh, let's put Afghanistan. Um, Israel, Palestine. Uh, so, so, so I could put other uh, items and Russia, which has become quite popular recently. So, so now I have them as 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 subcategories. Then I can add some words. Okay. Um, so let me just go there. I will select the drag and drop, and I will let's move them this way. Okay. Okay, so so now I I could have more words. The problem with this way, so so uh, okay, healthcare. I could put healthcare. I could put healthcare in two words. I could put doctor and doctors. Of course, I could put wildcard patients. Patients could bring false positive because it could be uh, we were very patient with. Uh, with uh, the uh, the opposite team, so uh, but but let's uh, let's put it anyway. The the problem with that is that it's it's hard to imagine all the words that could be associated with that. So school, of course, and let's put school and and I could put put a wild card school schooling etc. Uh, teacher, okay, student, uh, universities. And, and let's put also, uh, yeah, okay, that's it. Okay, so the problem with that is that you need to figure out all those words. Um, of course, it would be better to start with words. And here, I, uh, my dictionary is not active. I simply have it there, and now I could see some words. So, so economy, I could put it under economy, and jobs, I could put that under economy. I could also create new, 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 a new subcategories if I want. Uh, but the thing is that it's quite difficult. Um, so there are a, a few tools that uh, that that will help you do that. But first, well, and 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 let me actually add some words. Okay, let me put, for example, economy and security. Let's put that under. Uh, if it could be either domestic or or foreign, but let's create a category on its own. So I will drop it on top of of, of new category, and I will create a security category at under the root. Okay, secure. Sorry. Okay, 
So now I created this category and it contained this word. Okay, it's quite difficult to, to, to imagine, but there is one problem with, with those words is that um, <clears throat> words can have quite often many different meanings. Uh, and security if is one, it could be um, financial security, if it could be national security uh, or, or, or something else, but there's a, a lot of things. For example, in a uh, uh, presidential race, the word race itself, you imagine that it could mean both human race or, or it could be the, the electoral race. So, so you need to, to, uh, to, to take that into account and we will come to that a little bit later because that's something that you will need to, to, to consider. So I tend to suggest to people not to start with words. You may have some words and there are some words that are not necessarily very ambiguous, uh, but um, many are. So health, again, I could drop, drop, that, drop that into healthcare, but what I prefer is to suggest to people to start with phrases because phrases are much mis much more specific. Typically, they, they carry only one meaning. So we extracted here, uh, based on this criteria, so minimum two, uh, two words, maximum seven words, up to ten. If we want more, let's, let's reduce that to, say, five or six. Let's put six. If I search again, I will have actually now a lot more words, uh, almost 2,000 words, and, um, and, and now I could start to categorize them. Uh, again, because, for example, class, uh, if I want to look for education, class could be one, but middle class is not uh, good, uh, and, and middle could be middle east, middle, uh, middle class, uh, so the word itself could be misleading if I take it alone. And that's also the reason why, why the topic modeling, uh, creating a dictionary with a topic modeling approach is not necessarily the best thing, is that middle could actually be found itself, but every time it will find middle, it will actually give some weight to the fact that it's probably about uh, the Middle East or it's probably about uh, the middle class. So, so th that's, that's the issue with the topic modeling. But from here, I could start to drag things for Al-Qaeda, let's put that under Afghanistan, war in Iraq, that's an obvious one. Uh, national security, I have something about security, let's put it there, uh, okay. Wall Street, I could put that under economy, like that. But what is important also to know is that uh, the, um, the, uh, the, the longer the phrase, the more specific it is. If I'm only analyzing things about healthcare, uh, then healthcare itself will be irrelevant, but I can have a software, and there's a button here that looks like two overlapping um, uh, rectangle. If I click on that, it will actually show me topics that are, that are more specific. Here I have a healthcare topic, but if I want to create a, a more specific topic about access to healthcare, I could select those that are relevant, afford healthcare, cost of healthcare, healthcare costs, co coverage also should uh, should probably be, be go there, but let's let's uh, okay provide healthcare, rising healthcare. Uh, so 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 if I look at those, okay, make healthcare affordable, for example. So all of those are actually phrases, and what I can tell, uh, what I can do from here, I could right click and say, let's have that under healthcare, but as a new category that will be access, access to healthcare. Okay, so. Now I have something um, uh, that is more specific that is currently being measured with, with some, some, uh, some phrases, okay? And phrases are a nice way to, uh, to, um, to start a dictionary. But what, I, what I, I, I have to mention, I have to mention a few things here. If I don't know whether I'll, I'll find some example of that, but uh, there are some things that you should be careful when you start to have phrases. The first thing is, <coughs> is that you don't need necessarily to add all phrases. Uh, you, what you try to do is to add the least amount of phrases that will allow you to, to, to measure things. For example, if I'm only looking for reference to healthcare, the, the access to healthcare or healthcare costs, if I already put healthcare in my dictionary, then uh, adding other ones that do contain healthcare won't help me find more reference to healthcare or who is talking about healthcare because I already have the, the shortest form possible healthcare in my dictionary. So, so don't feel the urge to categorize all those phrases. Some of those are not relevant. 
and there are some uh, items that you should not, definitely not put in your dictionary. Are uh, they are the phrases that actually contain two t two issues? For example, here uh, I don't know whether I I can see some example. Well, well, for example, if you want to look for reference for Democrats. On, on, as one category and Republicans as another category, you don't want to categorize this phrase. But but um, I, I I remember, for example, from another data sets we have where we have comments about hotel. Uh, <clears throat> um, it was cheap but comfortable. It may appear quite often cheap and comfortable or cheap but comfortable. So and if uh, they contain it contains two ideas. And if you want to look for reference to uh, to uh, low cost and to a reference to uh, the comfort, don't categorize this phrase. Uh, simply ignore it and categorize the word themselves. Okay, so so that's one thing that you need to know when you, uh, when you put phrases. So I usually start with phrases, then I look at the leftover words. So I come back to to, to the dictionary and I apply my dictionary and I have some categories here. And I do a frequency now. I have some some uh, some frequency. Actually, I don't have anything about uh, access to healthcare simply because I'm up to level two. If I go to level three, I will have now something about access to healthcare. And I I have things at the, the the third level. Let me go back here because there is an option that I should have put there. Okay, so those are all the categories I have, and I have a subcategory access to healthcare. Okay. Now, um, there are all the left of the word. Typically, I tell people now move to the uh, move to the left of words, and now you'll be able to categorize single words. Energy, okay. We don't have anything about energy. If I could create a category, and I will do it quickly here, and let's put that on the domestic issue. Although, if it has some uh, foreign issue, uh, foreign uh, implication, Iraq, okay. I don't have. Yeah, Iraq is there. So any mention of Iraq, maybe uh, I should do that. But but what I can do also is I can ask the software. But the, the problem is that I have here in those speeches I have six thousand, uh, sixteen thousand different words. Okay. So and those words are listed in this table. All the left over words um, I have sixteen thousand. So it's quite difficult. Well, it's easy. Well, first of course you should focus on the most frequent ones. Because those, uh, for example, families, jobs, uh, all those items could be categorized. Children is there, RL is there, so RL I could categorize it. But uh, you have a lot of words, 16,000, and many of them are used only once. How can you get those? I'll, I'll show you a few tricks. Well, first, uh, when you have a, um, a item like that, what you could do is that you could have software to show you related words in this long list of words, and you do that by clicking that. So now the software show you synonyms, antonyms, related words, and words with the same start. Okay, so child, children, I uh, can find uh, uh, some of those. Okay, so so I can select those that are relevant. Let's select those. Uh, and I will create a family. Orphans could be also associated with parents. And all of those are words in your text. And some of them occur only once. Okay? You, you newborn, kids. Uh, okay, so, so, so I'll do that pretty quickly. Uh, infant, babies, boys and girls, not sure. But, uh, let's, let's not include that. And minor could have many different meanings, so I won't put that. Uh, but from there, I can actually take that drop that into a new category and it will bring actually all the words and let me create this family under domestic family to look for all reference for family but if I look at family it also suggests to me other words I actually uh, um, I think I should have put yeah I should have refreshed that let me refresh that okay and now it's if I select back uh, families, children is no longer there because I, I just had that, but the software didn't update that. But, but I have some words. For example, those were the same start are not relevant, but I may have couple, not sure. I may have uh, a few other ones that uh, household, for example, would be good. Let's, let's take household and let's keep that for now. Um, and I could simply select it. Well, actually, if it's with family, so 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 let's put those two. 
under uh, family, which is here, and I can go on like that. So, um, of course, you could do the same thing by uh, in in two ways. If you don't have a thesaurus or uh, an integrated thesaurus like we have here, you could take a, a thesaurus, either electronic or, or uh, paper version, and now look for synonyms. And that's one way to do it. But we we thought it would be easier to integrate that. And you could also sort words because if you actually sort things. For example, government, and if I sort on that, and let me search for government, okay, okay, I'll, uh, uh, I will see close to each other words also that could be added, okay? Uh, so, uh, but uh, by integrating that uh, into uh, words that it, we thought it would make things easier. Now, there's another way to, 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 to look for those is to actually um, as a software to show me not only the synonyms that are in my text, but synonyms that are actually, that could be synonym, but I didn't um, specify those. So, so for example, family, what the software does here is, is that it actually look at all the words I already have and try to show me synonyms, whether or not they exist in my data sets. Why do you want to do that rather than the other one? Well, first, um, if you, our objective is to simply describe a single data set and you have the data sets in front of you, then you don't need to look at synonyms that could be used but that have not been used. You could simply focus on those that exist and actually you could do it from here also. You simply check that and all of those are words that appear from your text and now you could add them. For some reason, chicken is, is, is a synonym of some of the words that are in, in my text because remember that each word can have many different meanings and some of them may be related to, 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 to chicken, obviously, or, or, or caterpillar, but some other ones will be more relevant, okay? And at some point, you won't get any relevant, um, relevant uh, suggestion. When you reach that point, it's probably because you have done a good coverage of potential synonyms. But again, if you are simply trying to, um, to describe a topic, focus on those words that you use, that are used in your text, but if, if you are trying to develop a dictionary that could be used outside on an other data set, then maybe you should try to look at some of those words that, that are not uh, in your text, but that may be used as synonyms of those. So th this is one way to increase the coverage. Now, um, uh, once, okay, let's assume that you have developed your dictionary. Uh, <coughs> uh, there are now two things that you should do and that are crucial if you want to make sure that you are making a good reference. Well, first, of course, once I've done that, I could do a cross tab. I don't know whether I select any independent variable. Yeah, I did. So I select the candidates and I select delivery. So I could do by cross tab and I could create bar charts, etc. The problem is that, okay, those may be uh, not measuring accurately what I want to measure. And, and to check that, what I have to do is I have to, uh, to look at some of those. And I, uh, I will do, let me go, actually, let me add some words. Uh, I want to add some words that, uh, actually, uh, if I do this, family, I will see some, uh, some uh, things here, or, or, or let me do that for, for, for education. Let me add uh, things like, okay, college would be good, uh, educate, educating, instruction, learning, okay, lectures, scholars, okay, um, okay, uh, but what I wanted to, to, to show you, uh, let me just right click, add to the education category, and now it, I, I will refresh that. The frequency will go up, should, should go up. Yeah, it's actually went up there. Now I can do a keyword in context. And that's a crucial thing because what you want to do is make sure that the words that you are looking at is actually measuring what you want to, 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 to measure. And there are some rules that, that have been proposed. Let me try to find what I can find those rules quickly. Let me jump. Okay, if it won't be too long, I think I have it somewhere. Yeah, here. Okay. <clears throat> so, 
So, uh, so what you have to do is that you have to use the keyword in context to identify whether you have too many false negative. So, uh, college, school could be good, but study uh, may bring some some items that are not relevant. And what I can do, I can uh, do uh, keyword in before or keyword in after that will allow me to uh, to see what are the things. For example, I already see that, well, the keyword before would allow me to see RAND studies, okay, so that's definitely not associated with education, and I just see here that uh, I have study group, but it's part of a phrase called Iraq study group. So that's a false positive. So the rule, and let me bring it, let me, I hope I will be able to, to bring it quickly, let me don't have 80%, well, you have a, a few choices. Sometimes you have no choice but to remove the word because, say, there's no way for you to make it cleaner. But you could also try to remove false positive uh, by finding associated phrases until it goes, the true positive go below 20%, so you will have your 80% true, true positive. Or you could actually remove the word but try to find words that are actually true positive. So, 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 so let me go back here, okay, and if I look at those, and, and if I look at most of those, I, I believe I'm not at 80%, I'm probably below. But the way WordStat works is that if a word is part of a phrase, the word itself would not be categorized. Knowing that, I could actually take phrases like those ones, and to do that, I select the item and I say, okay, let's select that, and I will categorize that, and this is an easy one, I will select that as war in Iraq, and I will have that. And now the word study will no longer, the, the frequency for, for, the, uh, for the word uh, for education will decrease because all three instances will be, will, be, uh, will be removed. But if I go on like that, and if I look at, at, at other things like, like study on, on climate change, or case study on climate change, I would typically categorize that and I could put that under environment, which is not there, but let's create one. Okay, environment. Okay, so the way we're set works and the way any software works uh, to do precise dictionary is that words that are part of a phrase should not, the words that are part of the phrase should not by themselves be categorized elsewhere. So, and this is what allows you to reduce the number of false positive in a finny category. Uh, and try to, um, so that you will reach this 80% rule. Um, uh, but again, if, if I look at that, I'm pretty sure that uh, the word study, and I did that on purpose, the word study most of the time is not good. So I, I would have to go back, and, and this is typically what I would do there, I would have to go back and remove the word study. But before doing that, what I could do, again, is looking at keyword before or, or after, and try to see whether they are, and, and let me select study again, I try to see whether there are any phrases that would be relevant for, uh, for education. I don't see any quickly, uh, so let's, let's remove the words. And that's an important step, okay? But, but let me go back to the, uh, to, to, sorry, to the PowerPoint. I do have some message from, uh, from okay. Okay, so let me go back because I want to stress this. 80% uh, criteria should no, not be taken to, well, um, there are some situations where you may want to relax this criteria. Sometimes you may want also to make it more, uh, more, more, more stringent. But remember that if you have, for every item you have in your dictionary, if it's accurate at 80%, that means that the accuracy, uh, uh, the, the, the number of, of, of uh, true positive in your dictionary should be somewhere between 80 and 100 percent, quite likely closer to 90 or even 95 percent, because the lowest criteria is 80 percent. And um, so uh, phrases is one way to, to disambiguate, and if we, 
if you can clean up a dictionary with, that has a lot of true positive by removing those, uh, that's, uh, that's a good way. But there are situations where uh, you may relax this criteria quite a lot. We created a dictionary recently for, uh, for, for universities and what we wanted to do is we wanted to, to have a kind of surveillance system where we were trying to find uh, rare incidents but we don't want to miss one. You don't want to miss whether someone wants to commit suicide or whether someone was assaulted sexually or whether someone wants to come, uh, come uh, finish school and, and uh, with a gun or uh, doing some threats. So what you could do actually is create, in this case, you, uh, you forget about the 80% uh, uh, true positive criteria. You simply accept the fact that you may have 90% false positive but, or 99% false positive but it will allow you to reduce the number of items to review because you just don't want to miss those uh, true, uh, true positive. Uh, so false positive are not as relevant. You simply wanted to somehow make uh, the dictionary more manageable to, to identify what you are trying to, 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 to look for. Okay? So this is one criteria. But we dealt here with only the true positive. We haven't dealt with uh, well, we, we dealt a little bit with false negative, so the things that you are missing, we deal with that by looking at synonyms and related words, but there are a few other things that you could do. Well, uh, first, uh, one thing that is important, especially when you are analyzing social media or any text that have not been edited, is to look for the misspellings. And I will try to open a dictionary, and it's not the best data sets here to, to demonstrate that, because it's, uh, it's uh, mainly speeches come from websites, so they have been edited. But, <laughs> but I believe that there has been some, uh, some, uh, some, uh, some transfer mistake. So the idea is that uh, if you have a large amount of text, you could add some words that you're looking for. Then we have a tool that will try to identify the misspellings, and it will actually. Uh, it will actually try to match the misspellings with the words you're looking for. Okay, so now we have some some words there, and I don't know where, uh, whether there are some of those that, that that could be associated. For example, this one here. Okay, responsible a a a responsible with a. There's a missing space there, and if I look at some of those here, okay, some 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 spelling mistakes. Okay, uh, but if you do that on a uh, data sets of social media, you will find a lot of those. So the idea is that you could add those. So that's one way also to deal with the misspellings is that you have a lot of, of misspellings, you try to find those. And WordSet has different tools, but the, what I want you simply to, to retain is that when you are analyzing um, uh, either social media, web survey, things like that, you have to know that you will have false negative because of the misspellings, and we try to give you some assistance regarding that. Now, there's another thing that you have to be um, to take into account, and let's keep this dictionary here. Is that um, typically you could measure how good uh, the coverage is of your dictionary, and this is this apply again only when you are uh, developing a dictionary that has the objective of describing everything that is being mentioned. So you do a survey, you do that. It won't apply if you develop a dictionary for, uh, for another purpose. So what you're trying to do here is getting good coverage. You don't want to have too many things that have not been covered. And the way to deal with that is two ways. First, you could measure the coverage. And we have a button here that will tell you that, for example, uh, I have 85% uh, of the sentence, almost 86% of sentence, that have been categorized by my dictionary. It means that I have 14% uh, of phrases, of sentence, that, have not, that contain no words that have been categorized. And I have 94% of my paragraph. So I have 6% of my paragraph that contain no words. Okay, so, so the coverage is important for several reasons, but let's try first to focus on how to deal with that. Uh, we have a text retrieval tool that allows you to retrieve, say, if, uh, if anything about anxiety, all hits about anxiety. But it also can be used, so here I would select anxiety if as a category and retrieve everything. But I can also tell to retrieve 
all paragraphs that contain no keywords. And now what you, what the software will do is that it will bring you, you everything that has not been covered by your dictionary, and you could look at that and try to identify whether there's something important that you missed. Uh, and what I suggest is that when you do that, you select word count, because when you do a search of all paragraphs that contain no keywords, I have now 377 paragraphs. What I could do is I could sort on the frequency. And of course, there are some words, well, this is probably a wrong paragraph, but it's uh, uh, words on the single line. Words, very short paragraph are probably, it's okay if, if you don't find something. But if you have very long paragraph and there's no words there, maybe you are missing something there. So you started here and you could select those and you could say, okay, Palestinian, let's add that to my, to my, uh, <clears throat> to my, well, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the, not the same dictionary that I have. So, so, so I can add that from here. And so I could focus on the longer paragraph because the longer paragraph are more likely to contain things that I've missed. Again, assuming that I want to create a dictionary that is comprehensive. Now, um, so you do that, then you apply that, then you go back to the sentence level and do a, a retrieval of all sentences that do not contain any text. You may get a thousand of them, look at the longer one and try to see whether you are missing something. Of course, um, you may still miss something, but uh, again, it's an efficient way of, of analyzing large amount of text. You know that you may miss a few things because of someone who expressed something quite unique or, uh, or, or made so many spelling mistakes that it's unrecognizable. But the thing is that you need to get a good coverage and at some point you will get a good coverage. But what is important also, and I want to finish on that, is that <coughs> when you develop, uh, well, I will add one thing, but uh, uh, when you develop a dictionary, so here I have a, a coverage of 94%. Of, of Let's assume that you have a survey, a tracking survey. You do that, you develop a dictionary to, uh, based on your data sets, and you come up and bring it to 94%. The next time you will apply the same dictionary, this coverage will likely go down to maybe 80% or 75%. It means that there are new synonyms, new misspellings, maybe new, uh, new things that are being mentioned, uh, but quite often uh, simply by looking at the synonyms that you missed or the new misspellings, you could actually work a little bit, do some maintenance, it will take less time, but you could bring it back to 94%. The third time you will apply it, it will still go down, but maybe uh, at only eight, uh, uh, eight, eight, 89%. So now you will be able to do that. And we have some people who have done this, apply repeatedly the same dictionary, improving it at the same time, doing maintenance at the same time, less, spending less and less time doing uh, uh, those maintenance. Uh, and now they could, apply an existing dictionary from the new data sets and they will get a coverage that will be consistent and they know that they can apply it uh, with confidence because they will, uh, they, they will be able to, to see that the coverage is, is the same. They will only check a couple of years, every couple of years to see whether there are some new topics or new things that, that occur. Okay? So that's one thing. One thing I did not mention is the rules. Uh, quite often phrases are pretty good for, for, for disambiguating words, but sometimes you may need to up, uh, create rules. And there is this feature here, uh, but rules typically is your last resource because it could be quite, quite, quite complicated to use rules, but uh, rules could, could be very useful when you're trying to measure things that may be more complex than single topic. Okay, if you want to look for actions, you will need maybe to use rules. And uh, the example that I often give is that we tried at some point to measure analyzing incident reports uh, by airline companies where we're trying to measure the action of disconnecting the autopilot. And there was many ways of making reference to the autopilot, AP in one word, in two words, autopilot, there was also other words associated with that, but disconnecting, turn off, put off, uh, turned down, so all those phrases were actually um, uh, different ways of expressing this idea of turning uh, off. Uh, and so what we did is that we created a dictionary for all the way one could express uh, autopilot, one other dictionary that express um, how to um, create a, um, uh, a make reference to turning off, and we create a rule that was actually uh, say, let's take uh, this one uh, near this other categories, 
in the same sentence. So we create a rule like that. So much easier than trying to imagine all the phrases and all the way one could express this. Because quite often it will be words that will appear non necessarily one after the other, creating a phrases that could be extracted easily, but sometimes they may appear far from each other. So that the rules are your last resort. Uh, uh, but uh, if, if you do it carefully, they could be very useful uh, for, for, for creating dictionaries. Um, I think I would stop there and uh, maybe sh show you one example of where we use rules. Uh, we did use, um, um, we tried to create a starting dictionary for doing sentiment analysis and we have negative and positive words, but rather than using those directly, what we did is that we looked them in, 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 in relationship with negation. So uh, we look at whether a word, for example, satisfied, if it's preceded by one of those words, we say, we create a rule that say, if it's preceded uh, by one of those words, categorize that as negative. Uh, and if it's not preceded uh, by one of those words within four words, or I think it's four words within the same sentence, then, then we would categorize that as positive. So rules could be quite useful in those situations because they could, allow you to, to, to do that. But again, we had to uh, take into account also double negation. Uh, when, for example, uh, uh, not only there's a negation before, it's not only wonderful, it's uh, uh, extraordinary. So, so, so not only if it's not a negation that should be taken into account when you switch the tonality of a word. So, so it's Creating dictionary takes time, but it allows you to get much more precise uh, measurement of what you will try to measure. Okay, so I will stop on that because you uh, you may have some question for me. Okay, thanks, Normal. If you have a question, um, put it in the uh, the chat box on the lower on the uh, lower right hand <laughs> side of your screen. And um, we have one question. I'll change it a little bit, but I think it's still going to be the same as the question you're asking. So the question is, is it possible to start with manual coding in QDA Minor to build a dictionary in WordStat? Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. And, and, and it is interesting because, let me go back here. Um, <coughs> okay, so, so QDA Minor is, 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 is a coding tool and it allows you to categorize text this way and it is actually a nice way to especially when you are doing a, um, a, um, a dictionary that is focused on something specific because typically you may have uh, some examples of how people express some ideas and you could categorize those and you select when it's relevant and you do that and when you call WordSat actually what you could do is that you could tell the software that you don't want to look at all the text, you wanted to look at some, some words. So let's look at healthcare and let's also look at, at education and war in Iraq. Okay? So uh, I, I, I may want to differentiate some concepts. So I can select that, then I can tell the software that I want to, uh, to compare ac across some categories. And let's do that. What the software will do, it will actually, whoops, let me go back here. That's the first time I've, I've encountered it. That's healthcare. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. Strange. Okay. We will have we will have that to the list of things to do to check. Um, but typically, is it because of this? Let me try. Um, yeah. No. Uh, I'll. I'll um, I cannot show it to you, but let me show it to you differently. I, I will analyze the full text, and I will look at the candidates, the delivery, okay, or the party. Okay, the party would be good. Um, if is that typically what you do? If is that you could actually to try to identify the words that are associated with some variables, you you select the categories up uh, again obviously uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll have to check this make sure that uh, that it is something that uh, that can be done and I was pretty sure it could be done but uh, here you could do a cross tab and then look at the words associated with say uh, let me associate that with the, the party and now I could display maybe some statistics to try to see whether they are related and then maybe also some uh, some statistics I 
I would tend to do a person R here simply because it's a point, it represents a point visceral correlation. So I could see words that are associated with, uh, that would be with Democrat. They mention Bush more often and college and Iraq and McCain. Uh, and if I, I, I look here, of, of course they were talking about Obama because he was the candidate in 2008, but they talk about freedom, taxes, and government. So by look, comparing words associated with different codes, it will help you find, uh, find uh, words that could be related. If I have many categories, like, like if I have, for example, the candidates, then I would obviously use something like, like a chi-square so that it will actually show me words associated with different items and if I, I'm here, if I do a correspondence analysis, typically my categories will be there and I will be able to see how, how words are associated with, uh, with some categories that I'm trying to measure, okay? And the more specific they are. There are also a way to simply <coughs> uh, do a um, I call the classification module because the first page actually is quite useful, but from here I don't believe you could add it to, to do your dictionary, but you could at least identify the words that are associated with some. So here I could look at which words are associated with, with, with Obama. Of course he was talking about McCain, but afford, invest, college, change, all those words were specific to Obama. But if it was a topic carefully uh, coded, I could use the manual coding I did on on QD Manor to, to try to identify the keywords and key phrases that are associated with those categories. Okay, then thank you. The next question is, can, can you say a bit more about the approach to dictionary building if the research goal is to test a hypothesis or make predictions? Okay, well, um, if um, I, I did differentiate both simply because uh, the hypothesis you may not have a data set uh, on which you are tr uh, trying to to uh, to identify things. Uh, if you are trying to predict and you have a, a, a data set for which you know the outcome, then you would do exactly uh, like I did. You would actually look at the things you want to predict and try to see whether you could uh, build a dictionary that will allow you to predict and differentiate those outcomes. Like here, it would be uh, the the the, 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 the political party, if and you will see that if you want to predict uh, Republicans, uh, you will talk about those words and you will talk more about, uh, uh, I don't know whether Ronald Reagan is there, but I know that uh, Republicans in 2008 did mention a lot Ronald Reagan while Democrats were mentioning George Bush instead. Okay, so, so they become predictor of, of, of that and I can build a dictionary. So building a dictionary as a prediction if you have some data sets, of course you will have to test that, but if you have a, um, uh, a prior data sets with some items that have been categorized, then it is um, uh, useful to start with that and look at how words are associated with those. You could use a pure classification model, no dictionary, and that could work pretty fine. And you have to test this before because it, uh, if it doesn't work, spending time building a dictionary if at the end you could achieve the same result automatically with automatic document classification. Now for the other approach, well the first thing I do recommend when you want to develop a dictionary to test some hypothesis is to look at whether someone did the same. And we do have on, on our website, we do have, and let me bring it, a uh, list of studies, okay, that have been done and it will be updated soon. So, and quite often, for example, if you're looking for something about sustain, uh, sustainability or maybe uh, um, uh, maybe um, um, corporate social responsibility, you, you look there and you may find in a title people who have studied that. So, don't try to reinvent the wheel. Try maybe to look at whether someone has started doing something, contact them and try to see whether you could do that. Uh, but, of course, if you um, wanted to start from scratch and what you don't find anybody who have done something like that, then you will have to use yourself, try to find good example. Manual cod coding could be useful because of that. So, 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 so you could use the manual coding and try to, to see how you could, uh, if you could um, uh, come up with, um, with 
examples that you could start with and then look for synonyms. Uh, of course, you could think of some words, but remember that uh, it may be hard to imagine all the different synonyms that people could use or all the different ways someone could express. So you will need more examples. Start with some examples. Try to get some, 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 some synonyms. And uh, dictionaries could be very different. Sometimes they will not look at what people say. They will look at how they say it. Uh, same thing for sentiment. That's one way to do it. But but there are some dictionaries, and, and let me tell. I don't know whether I have it, but I have, for example, we have dictionaries for for um, for um, political dictionaries, and uh, this is a good example. Liver and Gary. Um, I don't think this dictionary is necessarily useful unless you are analyzing UK politics. But go back to the Liver and Gary article. And you will find, and, and it is mentioned somewhere on our website, um, the, uh, the, the, this article. And they describe how they built the dictionary. In this case, they went and they tried, they, they, they get the platforms from the labor from the Tories, and they tried to identify the words that were specific, and they created a dictionary out of that. So you could follow the same process. But of course, it's not necessarily uh, an easy process how to do that. But let me bring back. Um, my PowerPoint because I want to show you one slides. This one. Th this is the article that I mentioned before. Changing national forest value: a content analysis. Uh, so this is a um, good example, and I recommend reading this this uh, uh, this article because this is um, uh, one of the best example of how they built a focus dictionary. They tried to identify four values associated with forests. And they came up with the dictionary. And you have this, this dictionary actually part of WordStat, and it's this one. So they came up with those four values. And they explained how they, they come up with those words. And those words were actually used by, by, by people. And they, uh, they were able to, uh, to, to build that and validate that using the rules that I showed you before. So again. Uh, if it's not necessarily easy to build a custom dictionary, there are other dictionaries that serve different purposes that may require very special step. But look at what has been done. Sometimes people have created lists of words, so it, they are kind of, of and, and this is another example, where they actually try to look at uh, image or, or personality of brands, um, commercial brands. And so Chanel would be sophisticated, and uh, Rugness could be Nike or uh, Adidas, something like that. So they come up with a list of words. Based on that, what you could do is that you could start with those words, maybe look at some suggestions as to words that other people use, and improve the dictionary based on that. OK, thank you. Uh, another question is, can you add manually to the sentiments word stat dictionary words? Can you add manually? No, no. To uh, you understand. I think you uh, understand the question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not only uh, not only you can do that, but you should do that uh, uh, because what we do uh, recommend is that uh, you don't, you should not use the dictionary as is. And and I apply it on 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 a few data sets, and I know that it will trigger false negative because there will be words that will be associated with the domain or that in a specific area will actually trigger. Um, trigger false positive or or uh, and they will be false negative words again if you are looking for hotels uh, comments bed bugs is not in my dictionary cockroaches also if it's not there and typically when they talk about that it's usually not good so you should probably have those words in negative words same thing for reference for carpet but there will be word that will be that are there that should not go there. So uh, we do explain how to use dictionary. Our recommendation is not to use that. So 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 you could simply select words that are not relevant and remove those, but you could add them. You could add words, okay, and filter to the positive or negative words. And if we forgot some negation or double negation, you could add those also. The rules, if you think that that we didn't do. Uh, the right rules, for example, I did change it to, uh, okay, if it should be within the same sentence, within uh, four words, typically this is what I do, and um, this is typically how I would do it, And uh, but if you don't agree with that, you could create your own rules. Okay? 
Okay. Well, thank you very much, Norma. That's a that's a, all the time we have for today. So there are a couple of other questions, but we we can follow up with you individually. Um, there will be a rec recording of this um, webinar. If you want to um, go back and re-listen to it again, it'll be uh, posted on the website um, later this afternoon, and we leave them up there. Um, so thank you for attending. Um, we do intend to have these webinars at least once a month on various different specific topics. So if you have any topics that you would like us to, uh, to talk about in these webinars, please get in touch with us through the contact us section of, of the website. Um, the other thing I want to mention to you is, is what I said at the beginning of, of, of the webinar is that uh, we're going to be holding a three-day training session, May 11 to the 13th in Montreal. Um, and the training session will feature two days on QDA Minor and one day on WordStat. If you're interested, again, go to our website or follow us on Twitter, Twitter or LinkedIn or Facebook for uh, the way to uh, register for that training session. So thank you very much. Have a good day and uh, hope to see you at the next webinar in March. Oh, by the way, just before I go, we also do do individual webinars and you can sign up through those um, at, at the website as well. We do them a few times a week. So if you're interested in those, go to the webinar section on the website. Thank you very much and uh, have a good day. Bye.